Hello, it's Molly Reamer with Bridges Grove and 30 Days of Goddess with a quick flip, flip through video of my January 30 Days of Goddess prayer book. I'm out here on a chilly day in the snow in the Bridges Grove studio watching the birds out there and having such a nice time. And I wanted to go through my prayer book really quick. This one was created at the beach. We go to Dauphin Island in Alabama every January. And so my prayer book came with me. And that's one of the things I love about 30 Days of Goddess is that the prayer book is this portable sacred space and it can go with you anywhere. So the first day I got up, you know, I was in the car at four o'clock in the morning for a 12 hour drive. I had my prayer book with me. It's like my portable temple space. And I worked on a page right there in the car as we drove. And then when we arrived at sunset at the beach, I found a feather on the deck. And so I put it into my pocket and then that ended up being a trend. And I found a feather every day that I was there. There's tons and tons of feathers from all the different seabirds. And so I found a feather every day that I was there and added it to my book. And that became kind of a little trend. But anyway, I like to get pockets put in the front. I have another video about prepping a prayer book before you get started. And that includes putting, for me, putting pockets in, adding cards. When I finish a prayer book, I go through and I take almost everything out of the front and back pockets that was in there because I'm storing that to use in the book. And if I end up not using it, I move it to the next book. But I like to leave some kind of little message. So this, in this case, I used one of our 30 Days of Goddess business cards. Reinforced the inside cover with scrapbook paper that I liked. Um, and this one, I fell out my moon wheel every day and uh, I colored it. I think I did the coloring when I was in the car on the way on that 12 hour drive too. So it's a little sacred space right there for you. I started to use tea bag tags to make little additions this month. And I was working through the 30 Days of Goddess class, the Companion Daily Devotional class, which is available. I will link to that in this video. Um, that class is available to you. And since we were working with that, which is themed around the original 30 Days of Goddess deck, and this was the anniversary of the 30 Days of Goddess practice, I had a deck that had some damage to it, and um, it was really just a damage to the 10 part of the companion deck, and so I decided to actually use the cards in my book, so those are going to stay in there. I'm not, I have a separate deck that I use for my daily practice, and so I used the cards in the book itself, and that was kind of fun because usually I just use them, draw them, and then put them back in their tin. And this time I actually made them be a permanent part of the book. And one of the things I like about looking through back through this one is uh, how obviously many different species of bird feathers there are. They're not all seagull, there's other things there as well, like heron, herons and things like that. I wrote every day while I was here. I was also writing a new book that is going to be a companion guide to daily practice. So I ended up writing 51,000 words there at the beach. And some of it was based on what was here in these pages. Some of the readings that I'm going to include in that new book then didn't get put on Instagram. A lot of times I put my poems and stuff on Instagram, but I've been rethinking my relationship with social media lately. And decided like, I don't necessarily want to give all my stuff away to Instagram. <laughs> you know, I want it to be shared with people in a more long lasting way. And so I kept some of these pieces of writing to myself this month and put them into my new book instead of po posting them immediately. And that's a little different because as I've spoken of in other videos, you kind of have to think about, you know, what is, is the practice the showing up for the practice or is the practice posting on social media and posting on social media can be part of the practice but I would ask you to consider you know the heart of the practice is there and is full and rich and powerful without anyone on social media ever seeing that you did it so for me the writing process is what is powerful and I may or may not share those pieces of writing elsewhere in this particular case they were all going into my new book instead and that felt good to me to be doing. That felt good to me. It also, though, interestingly, made my writing a little shorter because I found that these pieces were all connecting so intensely for the new book that I was writing more prose and less poems because I... Um, I'm sorry, my video of my December prayer book sudden, suddenly started playing in the background. I was combining the video files while I was making this one, and so it started playing in a 
weird way. So sorry about that. Um, you may not have been able to hear it, but <laughs> this is from Joni Ray, Tales of a Kitchen Witch, her little mini art. And I'm one of her patrons on Patreon. So I added that little mini art when I got it. I started using the words a lot from the companion deck. But what I was trying to say is my writing here, I, I found myself kind of thinking in prose rather than poems in, in January. And uh, sometimes I felt a little bad about that, like, oh my goodness, I'm not, you know, writing good enough poems. And then I reminded myself, you don't always have to write a shimmering work of staggering, sparkling genius. You can just write something and it's okay. It's okay because this practice is not about perfection. It's not about performance and it's not about pleasing. It's about practice. I made a tiny book for this one's pocket. I'm talking about other stuff instead of showing you my pages. Mm -hmm. But you're probably familiar with what they are like. Let's see, tiny little book in there. This month, something that I did differently is almost every little one is also a pocket, just in case I found a feather or something I wanted to tuck in there or have something to do. For this book, I also went through in advance and put up, made a lot of the backgrounds. I go on really long walks when we're at the beach, sometimes 10 miles in a day. And so I don't have as much time to spend on the prayer book. And so I advanced prepped lots of backgrounds. So I did like 10 days in advance, I would do the background image. And then on the actual day, then I add my rune, I add my goddess, I add my pocket, I add my card, I add my feather, I add my writing. But the, the core is kind of already laid laid there for me. And I find that really helpful. I used a lot from a we, an older version of We Moon or an extra copy of We Moon. I think it was only the 2020 edition, but it was extra. And so I used a lot of stuff from it, made some new postcard, uh, made some new bookmarks and things. I took, I've taken the bookmarks out already to transfer to another book. And so they're not here to show you, but rest assured, I did make more tag bookmarks. I think this is the day I started to add the little books to the tea bag tags. And that just became kind of a little trend that I enjoyed doing, made myself smile. See, and then they kind of reminded me, since we go fishing and things while we're at the beach, having little tags be kind of fished, fish outable, made me smile. But that was just cut out of a business card from Joni Ray. We're gonna walk in the bird sanctuary where there's pine trees. Saw a fox this day, caught a redfish that day. That just has one little card. I did a lot with more than one. And this, I hadn't done this before. I cut out from the printables. I left two of the goddesses stick together to kind of make a little card or a little book type of thing and then put little messages and stickers inside. So that was fun for me. Shell stickers, full moon. We moon art, more feathers, more tiny tea bag books. So some of my pages are a little more thematically the same this time because of my time. All that time spent walking, we end up logging 175 miles of walking in a month. And so sometimes you don't make as many things in your prayer book. But that's what I find is having the prayer book, having this space available to me and having it prepared for me is, uh, it's always there. You know, I can always come back to it and I always have a few minutes for a little check-in. And so it feels like carrying sacred space with me everywhere I go. This one I actually used a little piece of moon, moon snails are my favorite. And I actually incorporated a broken little piece there that's actually a real one instead of just a sticker little message in my tea bag tag. I don't always, the new things that I write, I always use the word of the day. This was a tag from underwear. Yay. <laughs> I made it into a little note. And, uh, but when I cut things out, I don't necessarily make those have to connect. This one did. The word was sacred that day and I used one that has sacred in it. But I kind of just use these based on my mood and how I feel, and I don't try to connect them to the word. I know that a lot of other people do try to connect them to the word. And um, because of how I prepare these prayer books, they're, um, you know, the content that's included in the printables and that's in the back of the book 
was often created a month or two months prior to the publication of the book, so they don't necessarily align with the words of the month, and I find that okay. I hope it's not confusing to anybody else, but that works best for my creative process. Since this has really just come, come from the heart or from Goddess Lightning Strikes of Inspiration over the course of a year, um, it's not like I planned this all out and had like, oh my gosh, I've got 365 prayers, so I'm going to put this one in this month and this one in this month. It's very, it's been very much an organic and ongoing and evolving sort of process. And so you all get to kind of come along with me in that process. <laughs> and, um, but sometimes it means, you know, everything isn't precisely lined up exactly because that was a, a little found poem I made from Wee Moon. It isn't always precisely lined up because I am creating it as I go. I'm creating it as I am inspired. I'm creating it as I move through my life with my little temple space of the prayer book and the holding space of 30 Days of Goddess, you know, by my side in this co-creative kind of endeavor. Oh, one of my tea bag tags came off. I'll fix that later. I was using little jars this time, which I kind of liked. That was cute. Extra tea that day. More Wee Moon art. Add some ice cream. Kept my little stick. this pink feather. I found this is the second pink feather I found on the trip and I'm not sure if it's natural. It doesn't look very natural, but it was in a super remote location. Like I'm serious, like eight miles of walking. And then there was a pink feather. So I think there's a chance it could have come from a, there's a bird called a, oh shoot, I forgot its name, a rose. Oh, I can't remember, but there there is a pink bird that sometimes apparently is in the Gulf area. So I, it might have been one of its feathers, but first I thought, oh, someone was taking pictures, you know, in a pink feather boa out here and they lost one of the feathers. And then I'm like, that looks really, I don't know, that doesn't look like a commercial feather from a feather boa necessarily, but maybe it is. I don't know. It's a mystery. Tea bag box this time. Oh, did I never stick my... I think there's a rune that never got stuck down. It is, in fact, a rune that never got stuck down. I stick the, I pick my rune of the day, and then I stick it in the pocket kind of in advance so that, that I can work on the page, and then I usually go and cut it out and stick it in, and apparently I did not stick it in on that day. That's funny. And then we drove home, and this page I made in the car on the way home because basically you can... This, uh, this sacred space travels with you anywhere you go. Even if you're in the car on a 12-hour drive, you can find a little touch of the sacred, a little breath of the sacred, a little kiss of the sacred right where you are. And that was a gift sticker that I received on this, in the solstice. So thank you for watching, and may this practice nourish, inspire, and enrich your life.